Hello everyone. Today we have a new subject. I I I feel like every time I I do one of these videos, the background is getting messier and messier. I really need to put it in order. Anyway, today I want to talk to you about your rates, and I want to talk to you about raising your rates. And this is something that I've touched upon in the past, and you know I've mentioned that you should never try to get business by providing lower rates by trying to do that race to the bottom because it's always just a downward spiral and it never works well. And this is true. You shouldn't do it. Uh, there are various other ways and I've covered them in other videos. But uh, today I want to talk to you about, you know, raising rates because no matter what, at some point it's going to happen. Whether you did do it and, you know, you charge too little at some point to get the business and so you want to bring it up or just because, and this is more likely, you're just going ahead with business and over the years you've realized that you're pretty much worth more in the market but that you still have clients that you really like and you work well with you'd like to keep working with those clients and they're steady clients but you you know you think I'm worth a bit more than this in uh, in the market and I can probably earn more than this and um, and you know you should be doing that because let's face it if you've been doing this for a number of years and your rates have stayed the same chances are you know that you're a much better translator than you were say three years ago two years ago whatever it might be and so you can earn a bit more and anyway obviously this uh, it can differ on a case-by-case -case basis and you kind of have to see how it works for you but here are the methods that I feel are best uh, for uh, for raising rates and you know that are pretty much standard practice and that you should follow for uh, for raising your rates because mainly because a lot of people do it the wrong way and one of the worst mistakes you can do is not announce anything and just try to slip it there under the radar that your rates have gone up because nobody no client wants to you know hire you and then uh they're used to working with you at a certain rate and then all of a sudden they get an invoice and it's at a different rate for all these jobs and they're like what the hell's going on so there's certain ways to go about it and uh the best way to do it is to prepare for it ahead of time. So let's get into that a bit. Um, what you should do, so in terms of the preparation, this should start ahead of time. And ideally what you have is you have a number of clients that you've been translating for them for at least a year. Um, and this is because no client wants to hire you and then you know they hire you at a certain rate for ongoing jobs and then like a month or two later, suddenly you raise the rate. They don't like that because then they're thinking, well, a month or two after this, they're going to raise their grade again and who knows what will happen. And it just seems very volatile. They want more stability. So ideally, you've been having these, um, uh, you've been having a number of your clients at least for at least a year. And, uh, and you know, that's pretty much a good cutoff point. You can see how you feel better. No, obviously, it also depends on how often you've been doing jobs for them, right? If they just hired you once during that year or if they hire, or they're hiring you every week, it can mean something different. So it is a judgment call, but I like to think at least a year. And um, you also, and also the, obviously the work that you're providing for them has to be good. It has to be good quality. I would say you're providing good work of good quality and ahead of schedule. You always want to send it ahead of schedule. If you're planning to do this, to raise your rates and to show that you're professional, you should be, if your deadline's on a Friday, provide the work, you know, a day or two ahead of time. This just shows, because what it, what it does for the client as well is um, it, it shows, I mean, it shows you're on top of everything and then they can kind of work with you if they want to tweak it or do something along those lines. Um, I would say by ahead of schedule, by the way, yeah, about a day, you know, more than, more than that, it's, um, there's no, you know, you don't want to rush what you're doing just to get it done ahead of time, right? But if you provide it a day um, or so ahead of schedule, you know, just show that you're comfortable. You provide it by the deadline comfortably. So, you know, just a bit before. Anyway, as long as you're doing good work and you're providing it ahead of schedule, then you should be in a good situation and you can approach your clients. By the way, if you've been working for a number of clients for a year and other clients for just two months, you can try approaching those clients for a year first and just wait on approaching those clients that have only been clients for two months. You don't have to do it all at the same time. There are different, you know, some people decide, okay, from so-and-so date, I'm go only going to be doing jobs for this price. Other people do it client by client. It really depends on you. Um, I So the way I do it is I make sure that whatever client I con I'm in contact with, I've been working with for at least a certain amount of time. So if at the same time I have a brand new client, I'm not gonna tell them about the price change. And, uh, and so I will wait. It can make my life more complicated that way because, you know, I have to keep track of who I'm working with at what rate. And I also feel like, well, 
you know, I'm working with people at a different rate, but that's during a transition time, if you will. Then once, you know, everything's established with these clients where I already changed the rate, then I can work on the next one and, you know, see how that goes. But anyway, make a schedule and just prepare it ahead of time. Make sure you've been working for a decent amount of time. You've been doing a good job and you've uh, been doing things on schedule or ahead of schedule. Okay, this is the preparation ahead of time. Now we're getting on to when you actually change it. First of all, like I mentioned before, let your clients know. You have to let your clients know. Email them and make your case to them. Um, I mean, by make your case, it's more of an announcement. You just want to announce that it's happening. You don't want to ask them, obviously. You want to announce it. And uh, so you can send an email saying something along the lines of, I wish to inform you that from now on, my rates will be so-and-so, um, you know, higher than your rates before. And, uh, and then, you know, you can just continue the email, say, you, um, you know, this, uh, you, you will, uh, we will expect the same professional work that I've always provided or even more professional work. All my translations are going to be reviewed and edited, you know, by myself at, and, uh, I'm, I'll make sure they're all uh, top notch quality. I'll handle all the formatting for you, whatever you feel comfortable adding on to there, um, do it and, you know, show everything you provide. And it might be everything you provided before, but now you lay it out and, uh, you show them a bit more formally and, uh, and yeah, that's it. And then see what and see what happens. So, so basically, you send that out, and you just say it like "fait accompli." Like basically, like this is what my rates are going to be from now on. I just wish to inform you, or starting, you know, next month. Um, you know, if it's May now, then starting June first, starting July first, whatever you know you want it. Give them a week or two, uh, you know, notice ahead of time. But you know, say starting whatever date is going to be uh, at this rate. Fine. Um, and then that's it. You know, at that point you wait and you need to realize a couple things. First of all, some clients may drop you. Like they, they might not want to deal with you. Uh, no matter how much you deserve a new rate, they might not want to, they might not be able to handle it. They might not want to handle it. They might uh, want to shop around for another translator or something like that. You need to evaluate how this works for you. I recommend accepting this and um, accepting whatever clients stick with you because these are ones who obviously do value you at that price and so they are presumably good clients to have and at that new price level you can try to search for other clients and uh, you know at this this new profession more professional you let's say can uh, find these new clients and uh, and so then you can be at that rate and you kind of drop the people who pay you less and you get new clients that pay you more I recommend doing this um, However, issues can happen. What if none of your clients want to do business with you or something or, you know, your main client, maybe the one you care about the most doesn't want to do business with you or something like that. Then how do you deal with that? Uh, there are certain ways to deal with it. I So actually what happened to me was I got contacted by a translator, said my rates are going up and this is what they're going to be. And then um, uh, I can't remember, about a month or two later, I got another email from the same a translator said, uh, due to lack of activity, my rates are going back down to what they were before. And obviously, I was happy to hear that. On the other hand, now if he tries to raise his rates again, I might kind of want to wait it out and see if he you know, goes back down or something like that. I don't think I hired him during that time. He had higher rates, but it's also because I didn't have any business for him during that time. He wasn't one of my regular translators. I just uh, use him every now and then. And so, so it can be risky, but obviously it has been done. So it's a judgment call, once again, for you. If you raise your rates and they don't accept it or something like that, you can always send an email. I wouldn't send an email and say, oh, because you don't accept it, I'll raise it back down just for you or anything like that. What I would say is like due to the market as a whole, because at least there it sounds like, you know, because otherwise they feel they have too much control over you, let's say. If they... If you say, oh, because that's what you want, then I'll keep it down, then they feel like, okay, this person obviously needs us, and so we can control how the rates work. No, you can say due to overall market and due to the overall level. Ideally, that doesn't happen, and I do feel that if you stagger your new clients at new rates, then there's less chance of this happening because you can get an idea of which clients accepted before you approach all your clients with a, with a rate hike. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, once again, I think you should prepare for it ahead of time. Make the announcement. Make it transparent and make it clear. And then just kind of see what happens and adapt according to that, based on that. And also, once again, if you can stagger it with your clients, it, it might be better. 
I understand that it kind of is more complicated depending on how many clients you have and how often you work for each of them. So that's a judgment call once again, but see what works best for you. However, I, this is the method that I've seen used and that I have used in the past and I do think it's the best way. And it works best for steady pay raises. So, you know, basically keeping up with your level as it gets better and progresses. If you've started at a really low rate just to get new clients and you're trying to raise it from there, it usually doesn't work. They hired you just because you were really, really cheap. And so you want to raise your rate after that, they'll just find someone new. Um, but ideally, you've worked with clients who appreciate you. And so if you have a new pay raise that you deserve, then they'll still want to work with you. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I hope you find this useful and uh, I hope uh, you're able to use it if and when you need to uh, raise your rate at any point in time. And there might be, by the way, there might be some negotiation later, like they might get back to you like, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? I've actually never had that happen to me. Um, every single time that I've, that I've done this, I, I basically get no response, and, but I still get work from the clients and uh, at least the regular clients and that's the way it goes. So maybe I've just been lucky, but it seems to me that they don't really try to negotiate much. If they do try to negotiate, I would negotiate as best you can. Just realize that if you do let them pressure you into giving a lower rate again, they'll know they have that control over you. And so I kind of wouldn't really recommend it. On the other hand, you also don't want to lose a client. So it really is up to you and it depends on which client this is. Once again, if you stagger it, like I said before, then you can start on some of the maybe not so important clients and see how it works with them before you get to the main clients. Um, and uh, so once again, if you can swing staggering, it, it does work well. But, uh, but yeah, uh, see what works best for you and let me know what works best for you because I'm curious to hear. I know what has worked for me in terms of a translator and in terms of hiring translators, but I'm sure there's other information out there that might be interesting. So uh, yeah, so feel free to let me know in the comments or uh, you know, if you have any other experience, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Please like this if you do and see you next time. Thanks.